Hey everybody, welcome to EM Chats. I'm Jessica Easley and I'm the group editor for Event Marketer Magazine and the Event Marketing Institute. Um, and we're coming to you live today from our headquarters in beautiful, sunny Norwalk, Connecticut. Bring it on spring. Okay, without further ado, I would like to welcome our industry expert for today's chat. He is the team lead for sponsorship and experiential marketing at WestJet Airlines and one of the minds behind one of 2013's biggest viral event videos, which still makes me cry almost every time I see it. Uh, we're talking, of course, about West Jet's Christmas miracle, and I'm going to welcome and say take it away, Greg Spada. Hey, Greg. Hey, Jessica. Can you hear me all right? I sure can. Perfect. Well, I will switch over here um, to my desktop, and glad to hear it is sunny over in uh, Connecticut there. We're in the midst of a full-out blizzard here in Calgary. Um, so thanks for joining us today, guys, everyone on the line and online as well. Uh, we're here to talk about the WestJet Christmas Miracle, kind of what we did and what we learned. Uh, we're not going to share the video today, just in the interest of time, but um, go over a little overview of what we did in case you did miss it. Um, we wanted to delight unsuspec unsuspecting travelers heading to Calgary Airport from Toronto and Hamilton, where guests were asked by a virtual Santa kiosk in the boarding lounge what they dreamed to get for Christmas. And through our digital command center and over 150 West shutters, we uh, made their dreams come true. This was an experiential marketing effort in its truest sense, and we wanted to demonstrate the care of the West Jet brand. Um, we wanted to capture the emotional experience on tape, and we wanted to share it across the country. Uh, this was all hinging on the concept of real-time giving, as mentioned uh, in the opening there. And as we all know, the risks of playing in the sandbox are extremely high, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Jumping to the next screen here, just to give you kind of a backstory on the evolution of WestJet social media and experiential marketing, kind of paint the picture for you guys. Um, in September 12, 2009, WestJet hired its first social media employee and launched our Facebook page. A mere year later, we looked to change our reservation system, and three days later, people, will, people were liking us to tell us how much they hated us. This posed a little bit of a problem, as everyone in that time was trying to figure out exactly how to leverage social media and how to put a positive spin and sentiment on things. And it took us a few years to kind of look to rebuild our equity online, and we found our niche in the April Fool's joke. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen uh, many of our stunts over the year, but they have uh, evolved from roughly 200,000 views to the latest getting about 700,000. So we began to rebuild our equity online. Uh, enter December 2012 with our Christmas flash mob, which kind of set the stage for our Christmas miracle, and uh, we kind of solidified us in the states, and we rebuilt our equity online. Um, fast forward a year to 2013, the brand now has permission to have fun, and we're looking to do some cool things in the content space. So some numbers on our social media pre-miracle, we're about 4,000 YouTube subscribers, 250,000 Twitter followers, and about 475,000 likes on Facebook. So not too bad, all things considered, but we still have a lot of work left to do. At the same time, the evolution of our experiential marketing was in full swing. For the better part of the past eight years, we had our fun and festival series, where we were already doing a one-to-one -one interaction through our festival sponsorship, and we did see some great success and ROI on that. The problem, we were doing it within someone else's backyard. We wanted to own this content and create it and make it our own. We didn't want to just slap our logo on something and brand content in that sense. We wanted to create our own branded content. Fast forward to New York and the launch of WestJet NYC ASAP. A long-standing tradition at WestJet and in the airline industry is celebrating the successes of our expansion and our growth and our new flights uh, across our network. So we wanted to make a big splash announcing our service to LaGuardia eight times daily. So what we did is a takeover, literally, of New York. We had 100 brand ambassadors dressed as Statue of Liberty, flood and commute in from all points of the GTA and converge on Young and Dundas Square, which would be the equivalent of Times Square in New York. Um, they were armed with 23,000 boarding pass promo codes, 150 free flights, and a lot of fun. The result? Uh, it kind of speaks for itself. We, we saw some great numbers uh, in return on this with over 15 million media impressions. We were the trending topic on Twitter and in Canada um, within a few hours, and we had over 5,000 contest entries within the first few hours as well. So this was a huge success in stepping outside of the festival sponsorship zone and really extending our brand to conversation. 
From there, the focus shifts to Christmas. Uh, our senior leadership looked at New York as a success and said we wanted something like that around the holidays. Deliver New York at the holidays. The challenge for us, we wanted to create a unique experience gateside, which is something that has traditionally uh, never been done, and we wanted to create a memorable experience for guests on a red-eye flight from Calgary to Toronto. We wanted to have music, food, dance, prizing, gifts. We've created a flash mob. The experience itself was fantastic, the content was fantastic, but are we a step behind here? Did flash mobs run their course in 2010? Fortunately for us, the results spoke for themselves there. Our goal of getting a million media impressions, um, we topped that slightly with 26 million media impressions. We got 500,000 views on YouTube within the first few weeks, and we started to realize that we had built some equity up around the Christmas time. That being said, we were now gaining some momentum, and our team now had permission to fail. And what I mean by that is our leadership team had the trust in us to go out and work with bigger brands, bigger ideas, and bigger budgets. With that came our relationship with the Toronto Blue Jays and creating some vignettes and spots, which we aired on YouTube and social media last year, which is now hoping to be in broadcast this year. Uh, we did some really neat stuff in the music space with Cardinal Official and Carl Wolf, and we did a flyaway with Labatt and Boston Pizza. Momentum was starting to pick up on our end, and uh, we looked to Christmas Part 2, or what is now known affectionately as the WestJet Christmas Miracle. Um, that number still kind of baffles me even to this day, 35 million views. I mean, you can only do so much planning and then do so much to get everything in the right framework to be ready to be launched, but at the end of the day, um, you know, we created something um, that we wanted to share with the world, and the world gave back uh, 35 million times. So, jumping into what we did in the campaign objectives, uh, we had three objectives. We wanted to make it about the guest. We wanted to use innovative technology in the execution. And it was about real-time giving and the care of our brand. The measures that we were looking at when evaluating this on the back end, we were looking at social media, we wanted to look at PR and our media, and we wanted to look at employee engagement. At WestJet, um, taking care of our WestJetters and our employees, as they are our brand, is, is a huge objective and a huge piece that we always keep in mind through all of our campaigns and through all of our activations. Um, the results, well, I'll flip it to a quick case study video that we have here set up with Anu. So Anu, can I flip it over to you right now? Looks like it's firing up, Greg. Yep, here it comes. Perfect.
Awesome. So we'll jump back into it here now. So those were a few of the results there that we were able to kind of garner from this. And a few of the numbers that really jump out, um, aside from the 1 billion Twitter impressions, it's just really fun to say 1 billion, um, was the 11,000% increase in YouTube subscribers. Um, as you mentioned off the top, we were only sitting around, you know, 4,000 YouTube subscribers, and now we're up around 44,000. Uh, for us, that's huge because it kind of puts us up on a platform and solidifies us, um, well, at least in the early stages, as someone in the content game. I mean, we know we're not a Red Bull. We know we're not an NHL.com where consumers, guests, are going to consistently tune in um, to kind of see what we're pushing out and engaging content. And, and now that we have the attention uh, of the public, we're looking to kind of grow that with our future spot that we're pushing out. Um, and also a big one is the 4.5 million views on West Jeff's other YouTube videos. Um, almost four and a half, almost five million uh, auxiliary views um, on our other content that was, was up there already. So this drove our uh, our viewership up significantly, 7,000% uh, from 2012. Um, the results, the program elements, um, well, a lot of it is, you know, kind of relying on, on the public and, and having them share it. Uh, we did do as much as we could proactively to see this video. Uh, we had a proactive media relations plan that was set in place. Um, we created a supporting bonus material kind of as a, as a one-off. Um, just we realized we had the content and we wanted to see uh, if we could share it additionally. So we created a blooper reel with Santa. Um, you know, he went face-to-face -face with over 200 guests and there was some really funny content there. So uh, that video actually got 1.5 million views and turned out to be the number five most viewed video uh, in Canada at that time, right behind uh, the few Molson spots and ourselves. We incorporated a charitable element. Um, looking back now in terms of uh, stretch goals, maybe we were a bit off with only looking at 200,000 views, but once we hit the 200,000 view mark, uh, we would donate uh, flights to one of our charitable partners through Ronald McDonald House and reunite a family at Christmas. Um, we also had a proactive media tour going along with it where we had uh, staff listening to uh, radio personalities with us and then dropping off those gifts uh, the same day that we released the video. That being said, our proactive media relations tour quickly turned into a reactive tour um, once we kind of hit that 4 million mark and, uh, you know, things started to really take off from there. Um, what we learned, consumable content. Uh, great brands and great brand opportunities are all about authenticity and the human interaction and the emotional connection behind it. Um, our content was great, um, but our execution was, was awesome. The, the idea here is you can have a simple idea, a simple concept, but it's about making the execution complex. It's not always about reinventing the wheel, it's just making sure that your execution is flawless. Another big piece for us too is there was no real brand sell. There was no promo code, there was no seat sale associated with it, there was no destination push. This was a, a brand play in a pure sense and something that we pride ourselves on where our West Shedders, um, they are our culture, they are our brand. Um, looking at constantly evolving and, and staying ahead of the curve and ahead of the game, the incorporation of technology, the ability to recognize, sorry, to, to be anticipate and create versus recognizing and reacting, that's, that's a huge piece in our business and something we always need to keep top of mind. Um, old school is still cool. What this means is that while our experiential efforts were fantastic, um, the event was, was great. It was still PR, which really made this thing. The traditional elements incorporated into the digital and the social um, are really what got this uh, kindling to the fire started. Um, culture versus strategy. And this is where I talked about uh, the incorporation of our West Jetters. And um, this doesn't happen without them. We had over 150 West Jetters volunteer their time over the course of the week to make this happen. Um, we bit off a lot with this one, and our West Jetters helped to make sure that we got through it all. And finally, the results. Uh, plan for the effect, not the results. That was a big key with this one, as I mentioned, when it comes to culture, to brand, the perception in the public eye of why we did this. As I mentioned before, we did this, um, not asking for anything in return. We did this for our guests. We did this, you know, for our people. And in return, the world chose to give back uh, in space. Uh, this is our rapid-fire EM chat format. So uh, I want to say thank you very much, Greg, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It was great. A lot of fun. Uh, thank you all for chatting with us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Greg. Okay. Thanks, Jessica.